Welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, we have the Auditor General of the state, Eugene De Pasquale. He's on the program. He's talking about can you get to a more important subject than keeping the kids safe? But first, Gene Barr from the Pennsylvania Chamber joins me. How's the economy in the state of Pennsylvania doing? Gene's going to help us out. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Well, we're not going to talk about the stock market uh, drop, uh, the price drop. I mean, we're going to move away from that and talk about the overall economy. And I couldn't have a better uh, individual in here to chat about that with me than Eugene Barr. He's the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry. And you conduct an annual, I think you've been doing it for 28 years. Yep, you call it an economic survey. And it gives us an in-depth look at the economy in this state, what employers are doing, jobs that are being created. And it, I don't think we could have a better time to talk about that than right now. So take it away. What's, yeah, what I would are the agree. big highlights? It's, it's really not the numbers, because you talk about what's the stock market doing, right. what's the Fed doing, what's this number, what's the unemployment sure. rate. It really goes to what, kind of how businesses feel. You know, what's, what's their perspective? Are they going to hire? Are they going to invest? How do they feel about Pennsylvania? And we've done this, as you note, for 28 years. We asked them the old kind of proverbial, what keeps you up at night? And <laughs> most years, it comes back as the economy generally or business taxes or health care. Right. Now, the economy generally, because things are doing well at the federal level and that's cascading down into the states, that concern has moved down a bit. What is, for the first time in the history of this, number one, the, what keeps you up at night is trying to find people to fill the jobs that they have available in their facilities. Now, it's a problem nationwide, because right now there are more jobs available than people looking for jobs on a nationwide basis. Yeah. Pennsylvania has some of that too. Some of it is they don't have the skills to be able to yeah. fill that need. Let me stop you. Sure. I was going to go to that. That is a critical point. We have people looking for work. The question is, do they have the skills to get hired by companies in what I think we could call the new economy, the economy of high technology? The, I mean, the economy has changed so dramatically over the last half century, and that that. That's a huge that's a huge problem, isn't it? It really is. And part of this is, look, let's be honest. I know you're you're at a four year school, but <laughs> part of what we have to do is reorient how we align the pipeline, as we say. Right. What is the product? You hate to talk about our kids as products, but they're a product of a system that trains them for jobs. And not all jobs require a four year degree. Obviously, many do. Um, but what we're trying to get away from is letting to telling kids they've got to go to a four-year school in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. And we have to communicate that message to students, teachers, parents, et cetera, mm -hmm. because there are a tremendous number of careers in our natural gas industry, in other manufacturing, where you can get a one or two year right. and be very successful. It's, it's abundantly clear that a high school degree is no longer sufficient. You need to have something to say, yeah. I've got a two-year degree or I'm certified right. in that. So something I'd like to see us change the definition of K to 12 to K to 12 plus. Yeah. Because we've no, got to move in look, that direction. I look, I, I think as a co lifelong college professor, I don't, I've never thought that everybody should right. go get a four-year degree. I mean, it's suitable for some people, but sure. other people, if they're so inclined. But we need vocational training. We need Absolutely. doing. And some of the four-year colleges are doing that. They're getting into vocational ed. They're getting into technology fields. Correct. Because that's where the employment is. They're starting to is. rethink that. Penn State, Penn College yep. up in Williamsport has done a tremendous job in terms of that. And look, we all know, I mean, we're both products of liberal arts education. There's an intrinsic value in that. Yeah, of course. But externally, we have to figure out how yeah. can you be successful? What's the best way of proceeding? And that may not be a four-year degree in something for which there may not be a market right. here in Pennsylvania or elsewhere. The other right. problem we're finding is that our society is less mobile. We're about half as mobile as we were 20 or 30 years ago, where people were willing to pick up and go elsewhere. I did. I left Pennsylvania for a while in order to do that. People are less and less willing. That may be a function of more and more uh, well-off two-income families. Yeah. Trying to transfer one spouse yeah. and get two jobs gets to be problematic. In, in, in the... In the next segment, I want to talk. I want to talk about what you think ought to be done to address sure. this situation. But overall, 
a, a large percentage of the employers in this state are fairly optimistic about the economic growth that's taken place. Yes. Is that correct? They are. And, and were, were there any, is the biggest concern the workforce development? Do they have other concerns that they There's would There's always concern. Taxes because of Pennsylvania's tax structure, which from a corporate basis is not competitive. We're right. at 9.99, right. highest effective rate in the U.S. Right. Healthcare continues to be a concern of employers in Pennsylvania and elsewhere. So those are still there. But again, it's I just can't find the people I need to fill the jobs in my facility. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna run to a break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about start the conversation here. What the Pennsylvania Chamber thinks ought to be done to help what? Address the, uh, the problem of finding, uh, matching people who wanna find, a, who wanna work with the skills needed to get a job. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania State Education Association and Partners for Public Education, bringing the power of a great education to our schools, our students, and our communities. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. I'm chatting with Gene Barr. He's the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry. We're talking about, I mean, we're, we're dealing with two topics here today. One with Gene Barr on workforce development and jobs and with uh, Eugene De Pasquale, the Auditor General, about keeping kids safe in school. It's hard to find two more important subjects than the, those two. All right. So what gets done as you so what do we do exactly yeah, what, right. what do we do what about do we do? matching this well, all about up? a year what and a half or two years ago the chamber looked at this issue and decided we have to take a much more active role and we're going to be accelerating that role as well part of that involved we're the only state chamber to partner with the micro works foundation with our start the conversation what's that My micro works the, you know you know, micro, it's not micro works, oh, it's micro it. works foundation. It. Right. You know, the you know, the personality from TV. Yeah. To get scholarships to kids who might not otherwise be able to go into the technical side. Okay. To get the training that they need. We're right. the only state chamber to partner with that. And we just, you know, we realize we have to begin taking a much more active role in helping to align, to bring the different sides together, to find mm -hmm. great examples of chambers and other people in the community and highlight those best practices to make sure people can understand them. There's another key piece of this too, in addition to the work we're doing, kind of aligning the pipeline, making sure that parents and teachers and students understand here, is the opioid crisis is having a tremendous impact on workforce mm -hmm. because the labor participation rate is down. That is so many people are out there thinking, I'm never gonna bother working, never be able to pass a drug test, don't think I can. Opioid issue is having a tremendous impact on our workforce. Between opioids and not fixing the immigration issue, we have got to figure those out in order to have the workers we need over the next 10 and 20 years. Well, is it something also that, uh, now you represent tons of businesses mm -hmm. of all types in the state. Right. Is there something that, uh, that you would encourage others in the business community to do as well, to set up scholarships? I mean, well, scholarships would be part of it. We've got some, all kinds of great stories out there in the business community. We have some we have some businesses who have gone out and bought the equipment that they use in their facility and taken it to the to the nearest high school to train the kids. That's kind of neat. It is really neat. They've developed, for example, down in places like Hanover, they've developed a manufacturing curriculum in conjunction with their local high school to develop kids, bring them out, right. get them a certificate, working along with the Gettysburg campus of Hack to work through all of those to begin to expose yeah. kids. Because the image okay. is, Manufacturing is dirty, it's dangerous. If you go into a manufacturing facility today, they're high tech, they're clean, yep. all of those things. We have to do away with that. And again, address this, this issue that says you've got to have a four-year degree to be successful. We certainly need four-year degrees, yeah. and certainly we know yeah. we need them, particularly in the STEM side, science, technology, sure. engineering, sure. and math. Yeah. But we've got to start getting people aligned with yeah. their career goals 
and working to get them the education and skills that they need. And I think given the nature of, you know, the diversity in Pennsylvania's population, urban, rural, right. small town, I mean, you would think that would, that would work because there would be people who are looking to go into the tech fields, to go in, you know, to get into some form of vocational education. It's just A, the money, and maybe B, where they live. And, and sometimes kids aren't exposed to it. Some of the studies show yeah. that you have, particularly with female students, you've got to expose them earlier and earlier because unfortunately they're, they're pushed away from it, which is tragic because right. there's so many good, smart kids out there right. who could benefit from right. being exposed to this. Yeah, well, this is wonderful. Now, I'm giving you an, uh, how can I, I'm giving the an assignment? Head, head of the chamber an assignment. <laughs> okay. The assignment is to come back and keep us we'll updated on this so we can get a sense about what's we'll do going that. on. All right, coming up, the, we have the Auditor General of the State, Eugene Di Pasquale. We're going to talk about what I call keeping kids safe, otherwise known as the School Safety Task Force. And guess what? We're going to have a little election on November 6th, just a little one. <laughs> and the Auditor General is going to talk about something that's very important. It's called election security. We'll get to that. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculties, representing the faculty and coaches who are devoted to providing quality public higher education for Pennsylvania's college students. Welcome back to the program. Well, joining me as often is the case is Pennsylvania's Auditor General Eugene D. Pasquale. And boy, I'm, I'm really excited about this school safety task force because of the urgency to keep the kids safe in school. Before I turn to the Auditor General, he's from York, Pennsylvania. So are both gubernatorial <laughs> candidates. And I, I kid him about yeah. it. Like, you, you folks over there, do you own the politics of the state well, or something? I, I, What's I, going it on? It is a sort of a fluke of history, but somebody just it asked me, well, what is it that's helping What's everyone? The fluke? And, and I'm sitting around going, well, if we knew, we wouldn't tell you anyway. So. <laughs> and the Democratic, let me get this right, Lieutenant Gubernatorial candidate was born in New York. Yeah, he, and that then he moved, the, moved to Braddock, but yeah. yeah. Boy, and his dad, his family's still from the York area. I'm so. getting out of this. Yeah. This is, I mean, but it, I get asked about it all the time. Yeah. You know, what do I know? Why? Yeah. Who knows? All right, now let's go to something really important. The School Safety Task Force, 68 pages, has a number of recommendations about how to kids keep, right. how to keep our kids right. safe. Talk a little bit about what the task force yeah. showed when it comes to climate in the schools. A couple of things. Number one is the governor and I co-chaired a task force. We went to schools right. all over the state. And so we went rural, suburban, urban, everywhere in between. And the one consistent theme that we heard everywhere, you know, we heard differences on a bunch of issues. The mental health climate of our students is worse than we thought. And that mm -hmm. was a consistent theme. And some schools are, you know, have the resources to put more mental health counselors in, some do not. That has to change. We've got to get our kids more access to these tools. And the social media environment that we now oh, all my. live in, oh. uh, it, Look, we all had challenges. Oh, we're teenagers. It's always a challenge to grow up. Sure. But the, what our kids are now having to grow up in today heightens that by tenfold. Yeah. And that was a consistent theme throughout all of our hearings. So what you found is an increase in bullying, an increase in depression. Absolutely. Among kids. And it's pretty. And I was stunned when I read the report. 16.5 percent of kids in school seriously considered, yeah. finish the thought, suicide. Uh, well, it, I finished it for you. I, I mean, you, so you see those numbers and you literally, you almost fall over reading, because that's, I mean, think about it. We're a huge state, 16.5% of kids in our schools, that's a huge amount of kids. Now again, hopefully, 
God forbid it even happened once. But the reality is that's not just the person that had a bad game and threw the basketball oh, against sure. the wall type oh, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That stuff, you know, know what is you what it is. These are people that responded to a survey that said they have seriously contemplated it at some point in their in their life. Yeah. I mean, when I read it, I was stunned. I was actually stunned right. at at. I mean, we knew it and we hear about it. And but you put it all together. That's the that's the genius of this report, as opposed to, you know, inkling here and inkling there. And look, and we all have had our challenges, you know, and again, growing up was never easy. But one thing that they stressed <laughs> over and over again was that when we were in school, if somebody did something stupid, it was sort of gone the next day, right? right? Or if somebody wrote something bad about you on the bathroom wall, you just, you know, yeah, you paint sure, over it. Sure. When that stuff is put on social media, it never goes away. It haunts these kids. Right. All right, let's go to the, uh, in the end, what can be done about you know, it? There were 31 actionable findings. Right. Now, we don't, we don't right, have right. time to go through 31, but highlight some of them. Two biggest ones for starters. One has already started, although more needs to be done. The other, um, I'm going to be basically on a, on a crusade in the next, you know, budget to try to get some help there. But first wave was bipartisan support for about $60 million in infrastructure upgrades to our schools. So schools have the ability to make their individual buildings more safe. So that was phase one. And there's going to be need to be more of that. But that is phase one of this. Mm -hmm. The other part is having more resources from the state level put into our schools and also more coordination with county, with our county mental health, mental retardation offices so that we get more mm -hmm. trained mental health counselors into Does the schools. Does that mean, I mean, there's this big debate about guns in the school and armed security right. guards and all of that sort of stuff. And we don't need to get into that. We can, we can talk about that another time. If you want to talk yeah. about it, we will. But it seems to me mental health, it, it counseling, and the schools themselves in, in the classrooms also have an obligation. Now, I, I hate to say to my colleagues in education, well, we're going to give you three more things to throw into the... Right. But th th this goes to the heart of some, a very serious matter. No, and, and so the first part of it is that the students said they need someone that they feel comfortable talking to. And it's not just a guidance concept. I'm not knocking, doing that to knock a no, guidance, I know, I know but that's a specific mean. different function. They need to have someone that they can talk to. And yes, everyone in the school community, yes, teachers, administrators, and the friends of the students all right. need to be part right. of this. Um, all right. That was something that re was really clear. We're on a run to a break, and we can back. I want a couple more questions questions on this and then we're going to get to an important subject, election security. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Inspired physicians committed to the good health of Pennsylvanians and the advancement of the practice of medicine. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. I have the Auditor General of the State, Eugene D. Pasquale. He's sitting across from me. We're talking about an important subject, school safety. All right, let, let's talk for a moment about trained security guards, I'll call them that, in the schools, the question of guns in the hands of teachers. And I mean, there's a whole complex of issues that are are fair, let's be honest, fairly controversial, right? Yeah, absolutely. So when we had these hearings across the state, in my view, there was a pretty strong consensus from the people involved, including law enforcement, teachers, administrators, that they did not want the teachers armed. Right. Pretty strong consensus. However, there was a pretty strong consensus, I felt, that having somebody trained in the school that was armed to be there. So, so in a sense, you could describe that as the middle ground. Yeah. But what law enforcement said was two things. Number one is if teachers are armed and something happens in school, they don't know who to get. If a teacher's walking around with a gun oh, I know or the mean. bad guy's walking around with a gun, and they don't know and who to get. Point, and a teacher is trying to do something, but he and has they, a gun and a security guard or a police officer walks in, he has a gun in his hand pointing it at him. Right? That's right. So they don't that's know. That's a good point. So, the, so they, they said that's why law enforcement mostly, mostly is against yeah. the idea. But what is critical um, to point out is that there was a strong consensus that having somebody that knew what they were doing, when I say knew what they were doing, it's not just a police officer, not knocking... I, know what you mean. I don't mean that to knock police officers, but it's specific training 
for that function. For that function of, being of security in a school. In a the, school. It's yeah, a, that's a, a great law point. enforcement made it clear that that is an entirely different role. All right, I want to move on. Uh, the Russian hacking, the right. Chinese hacking, the fact that Pennsylvania has to get new machines, right. you, you know, yeah. because, uh, 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 so tell me, what, what's, the, what's the big issue right now that the voters out there ought to know when they go on November 6 about election yes. security? So we're auditing the Department of State right now, the voter database security. Here was, it was startling, which was in Maryland, the voter database, the private company that owned it, was partially owned by a Russian oligarch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable that, that's, that that had taken place. So one of the things we're doing in Pennsylvania is making sure that that type of stuff isn't sure. taking place in Pennsylvania, that our system is as secure as possible. And from the machine side of it, Pennsylvania machines are not connected to the internet, so outside hacking is virtually impossible. It's impossible. But we also want to make sure that there's that one of the things that we're looking at is, can we go to either all paper or at least a paper trail to make sure people have confidence in one that their vote is counted? Right. So overall, I mean, I don't, you know, I follow elections pretty carefully and, you know, there are always some mishaps here and there, but I don't get the sense that it would have changed any of the outcome. That's not the point. Right. One mistake is too many. That's right. But in a sense, I've yet to see anyone make the argument credibly that, right. that Donald Trump did one Pennsylvania because of what the Russians did or didn't right. do. I have n and not seen I have no evidence of that. Again, we had a, a Democratic governor during the election, you know, so. And uh, the Democrats didn't file an appeal challenging the contest, did and, they? And look, uh, to be blunt, I was on the ballot that same time and I, you know, <laughs> and I was reelected. So, so I think there were other things at play than, than the Russian yeah. hacking. Clearly what they did with social media, Twitter, and that yeah. type of thing, that's a, that's a separate issue. Right. But there's no evidence that anyone's vote was changed. But one of the things that we need to be sure of it. It's not even just about changing the vote. Can they get into the voter database and remove names from the roll? And oh. make it, and we want to make sure that You're if you- are talking about the fact that registered voters, right. so people would show up, say, I'm John Smith, I'm here to vote, I live, blah, blah, blah. And they said, well, you're not, you're right. not registered. That's right. if, you, <clears throat> if you were to do that, two voters per precinct, that's 20,000 votes. Um, again, no evidence that that happened, but that's what our audit is trying to make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, overall, are you reasonably, and, and the federal government has put money on the table to take care yeah. of some of that yes. business of a, of a secure trail of some kind so that after the fact, you can go back and examine, yeah. am I right or wrong? Well, I am confident that we're going to have a fair and square election and people's votes are going to be appropriately counted this November. All right. Well, thanks for coming in. This is uh, particularly on this uh, with the School Safety Task Force. Boy, it's hard to think of something more important, yeah. you know, uh, more important than guaranteeing the safety of, the, of our kids in school. You're always welcome on the program. Thanks, thanks for coming Darren. in. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, stay well.